On the 17th of January 1942, General Walter Karl Ernst August von Reichenau, leading the German 6th Army, died near Lwów in occupied Poland. Von Reichenau appears to have been a very complex character. Someone who believed in conspiracy theories, but yet was keen on sports. He organised football tournaments even before World War I, and it is said that he discovered the gold medal Olympic discus winner for Germany. During the Polish campaign in 1939, he swam across the Vistula as the first person to cross the river from his army. He was a hardcore Nazi. Well, after all, he did believe in their racist conspiracy theories. He joined the party in 1932 when it was illegal for German army officers to be members of political parties. He could have lost his commission had he been found out. He is said to have been the first political soldier. Despite his closeness to Hitler and his support for him, he would state his opinion quite bluntly. He was opposed to the opening of an offensive in the West just after the conquest of Poland, to such an extent that he even indirectly supplied the plans for it to the Dutch. And with those plans, he explained how they could defend against an attack. He would also disagree with Hitler on military matters. I suggest that had he lived and stayed in charge of the 6th Army, then the disaster at Stalingrad may not have happened or it may have been mitigated. Von Reichenau was a war criminal. The massacre of Barbar Yar took place in territory under his command with his full knowledge and cooperation as did tens if not hundreds of other massacres. On the 10th of October 1941, he issued the following order, which has become known as the Severity Order, or even the Reichenau Order, which commands his troops to murder. The order, which once more resorts to the same conspiracy theories that the Nazis like to peddle, claimed that the German soldier was an avenger for all the bestialities inflicted on German and related nationalities, and the German soldier must fully understand the necessity of the harsh but just atonement for Jewish subhumanity. He ordered that Soviet citizens not be permitted to eat at the military field kitchens, nor given anything anywhere. He forbade the troops to put out burning buildings unless they were needed for troop accommodation and ordered the killing of the male population in those areas that partisan attacks took place. Reichenau's superior was Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt. He showed his support by saying he completely agreed and sent out a circular to all of the army generals under his command urging them to do the same and to impress upon the troops the need to kill Jews. Strangely enough, when interrogated after the war, he forgot all about this. At the same time as von Reichenau was ordering the murder of tens of thousands of Jews, he had a Jewish friend in the German capital. His wife, Alex, had a sister called Maria. Maria was hiding Hans Herschel, the former editor of the avant-garde literary magazine Das Dreieck, which means the triangle. Apparently, von Reichenau liked Hans, and when in Berlin, he would pop round to have several glasses of his favourite drink, Turk's blood, a half-and-half -half mixture of burgundy and champagne. Nonetheless, he warned Maria that if she were ever caught, not even he would be able to protect her from the Gestapo. Maria later hid two more Jewish people in her flat and survived the war. She later went on to marry Hans. 
His death is also surrounded in mystery. There are two accounts of how it happened. Here's the first one, which is the one normally given in history books. On the 15th of January 1942, he went out for his usual pre-breakfast run and later complained of feeling unwell. He may have had a heart attack during the day. A flight was hastily arranged to carry him to Leipzig from army headquarters in Poltava in Ukraine. The plane crash landed in a field near Lvov in occupied Poland and although he survived, von Baikanau had a second heart attack within hours which finished him off. So that's one account. A second account was told by his orderly Hein. Shortly after the surrender at Stalingrad, Hein continued to be orderly and was assisting von Reichenau's successor as commanding officer of the 6th Army, Field Marshal Paulus, his Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Arthur Schmidt, and Colonel Wilhelm Adam, adjutant to Field Marshal Paulus. We know of this conversation as it was monitored by the Soviet secret police, the NKVD. Paulus asked Hain how von Reichenau had died. Hain said, well, on that day, the field marshal and I went hunting. He was in excellent spirits and felt very good. He had breakfast. I served coffee. At this moment, he had a heart attack. The staff doctor was summoned and said that he must be transported to a professor of medicine in Leipzig. A transport airplane was quickly arranged. We took off with the field marshal on board, myself, the doctor, and of course the pilot, and set course for Lvov. The field marshal's condition became worse and worse. After an hour in the air, he died. On this flight, we had a lot of bad luck. When we reached Lvov, the pilot attempted to land, but was unable to do so and had to make a second attempt. We circled the airfield twice. When he made that attempt at landing, he disregarded all common rules and tried to land downwind. As a result, we ran into one of the airfield buildings. I was the only one who was able to walk away from the landing unharmed. So thank you for listening. I hope you found that of interest and I hope that you may wish to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I upload at least one video every week, sometimes more, and I always upload on a Friday at 8 o'clock in the evening, Central European time.